Craig Nickel joins me now. He's the CEO of Graphene Manufacturing Group. Craig, welcome. Thank you, James. Craig, tell me in a nutshell, what does Graphene Manufacturing Group do? Well, GMG, uh, as we like to call it, uh, makes graphene nanoplatelets and liquid graphene fluid uh, from natural gas. So we have a game-changing technology and we can provide our customers with great energy savings with our liquid products. Fantastic. And what are the applications that are most uh, sought after by industrial people right now? Well, I can tell you that uh, there's broad requests for making things stronger. And a lot of graphene companies are focusing on this area. But making things stronger takes a lot of work it's at, 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 the, at the atomic level mixing. Um, so after a year of doing enormous number of trials with our customers in many countries, we've really focused on the main thing we think we can help society with, and that is with heat transfer. Graph, our graphene has a spectacular heat transfer mechanism, and when we put it into engine oils and coolants and paint, it can really save people money. So that's what they're after, and that's what we're delivering. Okay. Uh, graphene from natural gas is kind of counterintuitive. Most people are producing graphene through either other uh, synthetic processes or through mining. Yes, that's and true. So the, it strikes me that perhaps the economics are better in your case? Yeah, so we, we basically take gas and we take the hydrogen of the, the, the CH4 molecule and we're left with carbon. Um, and you know, if you wanted to understand what that means, well, in a country like Canada and in America, you can buy 15 kilograms of gas, um, uh, a gigajoule of gas, which gives you 15 kilograms of carbon for around three bucks. So you've got, th you've got 15 kilograms of carbon atom beautifully delivered to your door wherever you have gas pipe. Mm -hmm. um, that means our economics are sitting uh, fundamentally at a different basis to everyone else who has to take a graphite mine in effect and turn that into graphene through a lot of processing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so tell me about the team that's come up with this whole process. Where, what did you guys do before this? Sure, uh, great question. We, we get that often. Um, so we're, we're largely ex-Shell International. I myself, more than half of my life, um, with Shell. And just recently, our chair of the board has joined and he, he was the executive vice president for Shell, for Royal Dutch Shell, as this strategy and portfolio. He advised the board and the CEO uh, globally for Shell, and he has moved Shell into, as part of a team, to look at battery play and hydrogen and lower emission plays. Uh, end of last year, he, he left Shell and he's joined our board uh, to give us guidance and obviously uh, use his contacts in that um, broad energy reduction market. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so Shell's interest in your company extends to the uh, heat transfer aspects of graphene, or is it uh, something to do more with renewables and batteries? Well, I'd suggest that uh, uh, whilst we have uh, no formal um, uh, connection with Shell, that there may be something in the future that we may actually uh, do some kind of deal with a large energy company. It may be with Shell or maybe another energy company. Just from the sheer fact that we can help uh, energy companies reduce their, um, reduce their energy bill and reduce their emissions through our liquid graphene products. And as well, we are playing in and we have great um, performance in batteries. Mm -hmm. And you've seen pretty much all the energy majors have now gone into batteries. They've seen the light that the world needs a change and we're creating that change and so hence I think inevitably we will be eventually working with one of the larger major oil companies. I see, okay, so then what are the near-term low-hanging fruit opportunities in what industries that you're going to exploit and how do those economics play for you? Sure, so when we are talking about heat transfer and that's the application we want to focus on mainly, we work in, uh, in the paint space where we're able to apply our graphene into paint and spray that on air conditioning and save. We have one shopping centre in Sydney, Australia that has saved up to 30% power bill over one year. Um, so that is- Just because of the just application because of, the of graphene. application of graphene, that's hmm. right, on the condenser. Now that has got um, a wide 
ranging um, impacts on many different heating and cooling applications and air conditioners obviously worldwide. So we're rolling that out through a number of different mechanisms with our customer partner as well as um, different manufacturers who want this potentially in, as initial manufacturing cover. Mm. Um, but we're also looking at our graphene coolant. Um, it, it basically doubles the heat transfer rate of the average coolant. And then that means that there's less money spent on cooling. Sure. Um, and so we have large uh, buildings looking at using that to reduce their air conditioning bill um, and, and, and generally looking at reducing uh, the, the cost for cooling engines as well. So we have a number of fluid manufacturers and marketers who are looking to use our concentrates, which are world leading in this space and, and patent pending. Uh, to be able to access you know, further value for their own customers as well. Sure. Run me through the economics of the actual process of extracting graphene from mm -hmm. natural gas. What is the, mm -hmm. I mean, the cost of natural gas in Canada is much less than it is in Australia, which is where you're based. That's true. Uh, but you're still able to sell the end product for a much higher price than obviously the cost of the ingredients. Sure. So um, without revealing too much about our pricing, but there, the potential for us to make our natural gas product for a very small amount um, with only natural gas and electricity being our main cost and most of the electricity is generated through our cogeneration of our tail gas. We are then able to look at markets of $1,000 a kilo and above, mostly in Asia, um, but in different applications where we can show true value added to our customers and when we're dosing at rates of 0.01%, even down to 0.005%. So we are putting in one twenty thousandth of our graphene into their end product and getting a substantial increase in heat transfer or reduction in saving for their customer. And then when we look at a price of $1,000 a kilo, it's subsumed by the gain and the original cost of the product. Hmm. So, so your revenue flowing now? We are, we've just signed our first three contracts. We'll hopefully sign another few very shortly with my sales team genuinely in Asia working hard mm -hmm. as we speak. Fantastic, and what's your plan for a go public strategy or an exit? Look, I think uh, a go public is, is, a, is, is likely on the cards in the next two years at least, um, likely before that. We're, we're really entertaining now the concept of a go public on a clean stock, um, a clean tech stock mm -hmm. um, type multiplier. Previously, when we were advanced materials, it was obtuse on how we were adding value to our customers. But now I think it, our customers are really resonating with the fact we can change their energy footprint and their emissions footprint. And we are a real game-changing technology, and hence that's why we have someone like um, Guy out and joining our board, um, acknowledging that our tech has got a real important plot role to play, and I think then that would be well received on, sure. on an IPO. Okay, so where can viewers find out more about your company? Well, you can certainly go to our website, which is graphenemg.com. Uh, there's plenty of information there to, to, to basically look at the blogs and various other information about graphene. Fantastic. We'll leave it there for now. Craig, thanks for joining me today. Thank you, James. Appreciate it.